Hey guys, I'm Jackie Brubaker. I'm an author, producer, two-time Emmy Award winner, and host of That Girl the Podcast. Each week, I bring on inspiring people and stories to help you become that girl or that guy in your life. That Girl the Podcast is based on the romantic comedy, That Girl a Novel, which is now available as a podcast to listen to. Listen to each chapter about finding yourself and adulting in LA. Find That Girl a Novel everywhere you listen to your podcasts. You can also find it on Amazon to buy the Kindle or paperback of. For more, find us at thatgirlthepodcast.com and follow us on Instagram at thatgirlthepodcast and our Patreon page. Welcome, Mara Mitchell, to That Girl, the podcast. I'm excited to have you on. Mara and I have known each other for a very, very, very long time. She is a happiness coach, and we are going to talk about how your attitude affects your outcome, which is huge. But because you are new to the podcast, I want you to tell people just in brief a little bit about yourself. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, um, I am a life coach and I just actually recently got certified as a life coach. So I'm, I'm new on my professional journey, but I've been doing versions of life life coaching my whole life. Yes. Um, yes. And, uh, I, I originally kind of got on this path in high school when, and I, it's actually something I wanted to talk about today, but I lost 40 pounds in high school and it was kind of my first experience of the fact that we have agency over our lives and that we can change things. Mm-hmm. And, um, anyway, I've gone on this big journey out in LA, uh, doing singing and songwriting and kind of circled back to the life coaching after having kind of a three year journey of returning home to myself, um, kind of healing a bunch of things. And so, uh, really excited to, use that in helping others, um, as well as some of the things I experienced as a singer. So I'm so excited for you to talk about this. Um, and then with that, we're going to just talk about how your attitude affects your outcome and how that affected your outcome and how others can use that to affect theirs. So let's start with losing 40 pounds and how that happened because so many people struggle with their weight and, you know, they think it's mental. They think it's physical. It's hormonal. It's so many different aspects. Um, and it can be absolutely a whole yeah. plethora of things, but losing weight and the idea of being thin is something we talk about a lot on the podcast, um, because it's such a huge issue with men and women. So mm-hmm. let's start with your journey. Okay. Beautiful. Awesome. So I actually have two parts that I want to say on that. Um, the first thing, um, is I think, so much we, okay, actually it's kind of the same thing. I think what we really want is a different state of feeling, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So more than even like losing weight, we want how we think we're going to feel when we lose weight, right? Yeah. And so for me personally, in my journey back in the day, I had so much, um, like, I don't want to say I had a victim mentality, but I really felt like things happened to me Mm -hmm. and I really felt powerless in a lot of ways. And now this can be a double-edged sword as far as like losing weight, because it can also put you on the track to like having an eating disorder, um, that, that sense of control, but maybe we should preface right now too, that if you are, um, triggered by, um, talk of losing weight or anything, then perhaps maybe this isn't the episode for you. Um, cause we will kind of dive through parts of this. So just a little warning here and, and carry on. (laughs) Although I will add to that. I do have something to say on that. That is healing, but fantastic for me. Yeah. It's it's your choice. (laughs) choice. You know, you do you, you do you. (laughs) Yeah. But, um, but for me personally, I just, all that really changed was my routine. So back in the day, um, I I started getting up early, which is huge just in and of itself, right? For like kind of taking control of your life. I started getting up early. And then the first thing that I would do was go to the gym. And the trainer there taught me for the first time about food, you know, and how that affects and like kind of like food as food as fuel rather Mm -hmm. than, you know, how I was using it. I just, I love to eat, still love to eat. But, um, but 
where I'm going to actually jump ahead and that I think is really important. So I'm going to kind of jump, bear with me. Um, one of the things that is interesting that just came up for me recently with a client that I really want to shine a light on. Um, I have this client who wants to feel comfortable in his skin. Mm -hmm. And so he really wants to lose weight. And I started working with him on that. And of course I'm supporting him in that, but I realized, like I said, so much, really, it's not the weight he wants to lose. It's that he wants to feel comfortable in his skin. And I told him about my journey back in high school when I lost the 40 pounds. And I thought, and just as a question, wouldn't it be interesting? Because yes, I lost 40 pounds, but also what I did was I started caring about my appearance. I bought a bunch of cute new clothes. Um, my body language changed. I, you know, I, chin up, chest out. I, I behaved differently. I was more outgoing. Um, I started being more social. So a lot of the things that happened, it's interesting. Was it like, I, I wonder if I hadn't lost any weight, if I had just, you know, uh, dressed better, had more fun with my outfits, been more social, changed my body language. It's interesting to see. Um, cause I know personally, I will be so much more attracted to a person from their energy. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's like, was it really the weight? Mm -hmm. And, um, and that's actually kind of what I wanted to talk about is so much of, of these changes and the way that you experience life is your attitude and the attitude mm -hmm. that you have going into it. Um, because attitudes are contagious, right? Mm -hmm. So it also, like not only does it intrinsically shape how you go through an experience, but also how others perceive you. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Sorry. But, I know I kind of dance all over the place. No, you're that. not. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm with you. No, we're good. Okay. We're just keep going. I'm listening. That's why I'm so quiet. I'm just like, okay. yes. <laughs> well, I, I wanted, cause I wanted to tell you something that I did do years later that I think supports this. Okay. Um, and, and it's something that I kind of geek out on cause I thought it was really cool at the time. So, um, years ago I got my hair highlighted and as a natural brunette, you know how, when you get your hair highlighted, it can like, depending on the tone, yeah. look good or bad, right. And so it can also be very jarring to your eye because you're used to having dark, yes. dark hair. Um, I went through the same thing. I was always blonde my whole life. And then I was like, I'm going to go dark brunette, like your color. Yeah. And then yeah. that was amazing. And I had that for, I don't know, seven or eight years or something. And then I was like, no, I think I'm going to get a couple of highlights. And she did them. And I was like, Oh my God, I look like a news anchor. Oh my uh, gosh. And then a week later I was like, could we go lighter? And that's how it happens. <laughs> By the way, blonde orexia is a real thing. <laughs> so, but it's very nice. jarring to the eye with, especially with hair. I'm a big proponent of like hair will change your attitude too. So go on. Yeah. Get some highlights. Yes. yes. <laughs> And, and I'll preface this by saying one time in high school, I got my hair done and I looked like an Easter egg and I actually took a sick mm. day because that's how much my hair can affect me talking about attitude. Oh yeah. So anyway. Oh yeah. Yeah. I've been there. I've been there. Get it. <laughs> um, so, so I got my hair highlighted and it was way too orange for my liking. <sighs> there was like a little no bit of orange. spotty. Yeah. A little oh, bit oh. of spottiness. And it was so, like you said, jarring and different that I'm like, oh God, now I'm going to go into work. And it's like, no one can not comment because it's an obvious like big change, right? Right. So I went into work kind of like with my head hung and like, you know, head down. <laughs> and and sure enough, some people were like, oh, you, you did, you know, you did your, your hair. Mm. And I'm like, uh-huh. And I'm like, uh-huh, Nice. You know, but like that. Yeah. And so after about four of these comments, I don't know why I thought to do this, but I was like, I wonder what would happen if I acted like I like it. Mm. So just so I, so I just decided I was like, because I realized like I was you know I was shrinking into myself and acting like mm -hmm. really weird. I was like, I'm gonna act like I love it, like I think it looks great, and I'm you know I'm gonna change it up. So I did, I like opened up my body language. I looked people in the eye. I did all the things that you do if you liked your hair. Yeah. And I swear to you, you're like, oh my God, your hair looks so good. I want to get mine highlighted. Oh, it, it, like it was night and day. Group thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but that's when, that was another time that I really realized so much of what people respond to 
is your, your attitude and your energy and, and not even really the thing. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, um, I have another little story about this that I wanted to share if that's cool. Of course, please. This is all about that. (laughs) Or like, or like two, two other little ones. So I had a girlfriend and this was back before I was coaching professionally, but like, I would always like try to coach my friends because it was just fun. But I had a girlfriend and her dad was overseas and she loved him so much. But every time they would talk, uh, he obviously felt guilty that he was overseas and not with her. And he would start projecting as if she was mad at him all this like defensive energy and just weird energy. And Mm. she said it was horrible because she loved him so much. But every time she talked to him after about 10 minutes in, she'd find herself starting to feel like mad at him. And, but like just from his energy. Right. Yeah. And so, uh, and this happens a lot with dating too. Like when one person gets Mm. weird and then that that self-fulfilling prophecy. Mm. But, um, so what we did is I challenged her. Okay. The next time you talk to your dad, don't bite the bait. Just hold your energy of love and gratitude Mm. and connection and and let him kind of wear himself out in his little spiral. And it worked. (gasps) And then, yeah, by the end of the conversation, they were connecting. He no longer felt guilty. And it, it was it was cool. That's so, so, yeah. so true. Well, because, you know, people typically, most all people pick up energy from the people around us and our body language, the tone of our voice, what we're saying, how we're presenting in a physical way or an audible way. Um, and so it's so easy to start making stuff up in your head. I actually just had something like that happen this morning in a conversation where someone had made up all of these assumptions of what was going on when that wasn't the case at all. And then Uh like when they got the truth of the matter, which, you know, this is also, we should all be more honest about our feelings, but you know, it just, it hadn't come up yet. And then they were like, Oh, that does make a lot more sense. And it's like, no, 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 no. We do create these kind of, you know, things in our head, these thoughts, these fantasies, these ideas, Uh and they can be negative as well. Like her dad is like, I feel so much guilt. I'm going to just, imagine that you feel so angry at me. And that's a very human thing to feel that that attitude is what created the outcome of her being like, yeah, no, I am mad at you now. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) It's so, it's so weird. Or even like, you know how, if someone thinks you're lying Mm -hmm. and they're like, you're lying, you start to feel like you're lying. Yes. Yes. (laughs) Oh God, that's awful. Yeah. Yeah. Right. No, you start like, like I'll start like laughing or oh, my mom, especially, Oh my God. My mom is so guilty of laughing when she's like nervous. <laughs> and I'm like, see, you're so guilty. You're so guilty, <laughs> but it's true. Yeah, we do. We start to think that we are guilty for something or, or, you know, some of us who have had some interesting trauma in our childhood, will start to think, yes. did I do something wrong? Like maybe they're right. right. Like maybe I forgot. It's like gaslighting. You're just like, hold uh-huh. on, let me gaslight myself real quick. Let me just make sure. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's just so important to keep your attitude. Well, so, okay. So let's go into how to create the right attitude for yes. the right outcome. Okay. Go for it. <laughs> okay. So, um, do you know who Marissa Peer is? No. The hypnother- okay. She's a hypnotherapist. <gasps> she's amazing. Yeah. But she really helped me in, in my, like, cause I don't want to say it's like brainwashing yourself because that sounds negative. It's reprogramming your brain. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. But like, um, for instance, you know how sometimes you'll, you'll wake up, uh, maybe like you wanted to sleep in, uh, you really want a day off, but you have like things booked, uh, just kind of checking yourself and being like, hold on, I've been praying to have things to do and to be booked Mm. and, and shifting your attitude, like just kind of your internal, uh, dialogue Mm -hmm. to like, Oh, I'm so grateful that I'm getting up today and I have this stuff to do. Just that's usually where I start is just, um, speaking to myself. I'll say it out loud. Sometimes I'll even actually, I did this for a week and it was super helpful. Right. When I woke up, Mm -hmm. I would, um, write affirmations and, but Mm -hmm. I would just kind of let it flow, um, of just everything that I was grateful for or how the day was going to go. Something like that really helps. Um, yeah, lots of different tricks, uh, as far as like Mm -hmm. affirmations, writing them. Also, I think, um, I got this from Gabby Bernstein, but she does something called the appreciation game. 
which is kind of like a gratitude list, but it's usually smaller things like, like, um, you know, I appreciate that I have the technology to be on here with you today. I appreciate that my morning was free. I appreciate you and your sweet soul. I, I appreciate that later I'm going to eat Thai food. Oh, I like I just basically, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> like, you just, you just kind of get in this thing of like, Oh yeah, things are really good. Like I have yeah. all these amazing things and, and your energy just th- starts to sort of rise. Yeah. Um, yeah, that helps me. And then also I think, um, being myself, because personally, one of my pitfalls that I will fall into is this idea sometimes that in order to date the person or have the success or, mm. you know, whatever the thing is, I need to be somebody else. Mm. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so one thing that really helps me is just kind of like being more myself with all these different attitudes that, that kind of like brings me down. Cause that's what everyone wants is to feel comfortable right. in their own skin. Right. Right. Not to be like cheated for who they are. Exactly. Not to be chasing some false version. Um, We could do a whole episode on that alone with dating, which we probably should. We (laughs) should do an episode on that with dating. Um, (laughs) Yes, because that is such. There's always, you know, we're always chasing the carrot. And if we can just come back into our own selves and remind ourselves, why we are great right now, right here for what we're doing and what we've already done. Um, you know, it's powerful. It's a, it's such a huge reminder because so many people live in the future or they live in the past. They never really live in the present. Mm-hmm. And the present is a beautiful place too, because one day you will be remembering this present as your past and think, well, yeah. that was great, you know? And yeah. we're always rushing and moving and doing so much that, you know, that attitude of gratitude can get very lost in the mix of busyness and life. Um, I know, you know, a year ago I started, especially with the pandemic and whatnot, like I had a couple of health issues and it really Uh scared me because I don't really get sick very often. Um, but I'll get like, you know, something here and there. And it just was kind of a month. It was like last September. It was this month that I just had like, my body just broke down and I was like, wow, this is awful. Like, (laughs) oh my gosh. And I remember when I finally started to heal every morning, I would wake up and I've kept this going just in my head. I'll just be like, thank you so much for my health. That's it. Mm -hmm. Because you Mm -hmm. remember how much your health affects your whole life when it's not Uh, working. Yeah. You know, writing that down. It's so powerful. I mean, I'm not going to lie. It's a little cold outside and my back was like a little twisted a couple of days ago. So it's like a little persnickety right now. So I'm like, okay. But it reminds you again, like, wow, I'm so grateful that my back works and like, yeah. it's still able to move and sure there's a little bit of pain right now, but it's okay. And it's healing and like giving those positive affirmations to my body of like, you're healing. What do you need? Do you need ice? Do you need heat? Do you need rest? What do you need? Like, I'm yeah. going to take care of you. And I think, you know, you were saying something along the lines of that earlier too, is just really the self-care of our own spirit, you know, our soul and our Mm -hmm. heart, including our bodies is so much about the attitude that you give off. So Mm -hmm. if you're like mean to yourself, hard on yourself, hard on your body, you don't get enough rest, you don't eat good food, you're working yourself to the bone, like yeah, you're not going to be very, very grateful every day. You're going to feel right. horrible and there's going to be nothing to give. In fact, you're just going to be projecting negativity. And then that's, I mean, what I believe is just going to keep coming yeah. back to you because that's your outcome. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, it's funny. Cause when you said that, I actually, I wanted to bring up another aspect. Um, what's interesting too, is say someone who has your ideal body, right? Mm. But if they're not feeling good about themselves, if they're in a weird, dark place, if their body language is closed, like it goes, that's like exactly the point that I was trying to kind of like hone in on is that so much of these things, really, it's about your, your attitude and your love for yourself. Like you were saying, Mm -hmm. and I wanted to tell you too, one thing I just uh, made a, like a deal with a friend that every night for the month of November, before we go to sleep, we're going to spend five minutes just sending love to our bodies um, exactly as they are. Like yeah. total acceptance, total love, and yeah. really like practice being embodied um, exactly as we are. Mm-hmm. I, so, love, I that. love that. Because, 
your body knows it's so, I mean, this is all just science, right? I mean, your brain tells your body what to do. And if your brain is constantly telling your body, you're not thin enough, you're not good enough, you're not what I want, your body will start to mirror that. It Mm -hmm. will. And especially Mm -hmm. going back to the losing weight, because that's such a prevalent issue with so many people. Um, When you are in the midst of trying to lose weight, as long as you know you're doing the right things, you've got to give your body a chance to do its job too. Your brain can't just constantly be like, why aren't you losing weight? What is it? Like, you know, maybe you need to cut your carbs. Maybe you need more exercise. You know, you've got to figure out like logistics of it, but then you've also got to give your body a chance to do what it does because it is an amazing instrument and it wants to be good to you. I think we forget Mm -hmm. that too, is that our bodies really want to work for us. It's trying every day, even when you are in major physical dishealth, you know, it's trying. And so Mm -hmm. giving that love back to your body and just telling it, like, I know you're doing the best you can and I'm here for you. And I'm just going to try to be as kind to you and as, you know, nutritious and give you what you need, give you the rest you need. Um, because I know that you can do it. And yeah, I mean, just that alone is so game changing. I've found in my experience and a lot of other people, you know, absolutely. It, it's, it's so interesting. Um, too, I think you're, you're so right when you say that your body is always listening. And, and one thing that that also made me think of, I think a lot of times it's not even about like, necessarily the habits or the things that you're eating. Um, so, uh, one of my clients, it was before she worked with me, but she mentioned this while we were working together, um, her and her boyfriend broke up and she did not change anything. She didn't start working out. She didn't stop eating because she was depressed. If anything, she actually started eating ice cream because she went through a breakup, (laughs) but she lost 14 pounds. And yeah. And so much of it was, I think her body literally was like carrying his weight Yes. Like the weight yeah. of this relationship. Yeah. And, and, uh, so it's just, it's so interesting. Um, you're so right in what you say about like our body always listening and our body reflecting back to us kind of our attitudes and what we're going through, that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Well, exactly. Because you're, you know, your attitude of whatever it is mm-hmm. will eventually start to manifest physically. And we know this, this is not like yeah. woo woo stuff. This is just pure science. And yeah. it's, it's always heartbreaking to me when I hear of people getting certain prognosis because typically you can see where it's showing up in the body and how that correlates to whatever negative emotional thing is happening consistently in their life that they're Mm -hmm. allowing to have happen. Um, We just have so much more power than I think that a lot of us give ourselves credit for in maintaining the peace in our lives, right? We have the choice to be around this type of person or situations or work situations. Like you can have the best attitude all you want, but if you go into a negative work situation every day and you think, I don't have a choice, I have to stay, but I have to put up Mm -hmm. with this. Your body is eventually going to tell you this isn't okay anymore through physical ailment. And, you know, and, and this goes for relationships too. Same thing happened to me. I got out of a terrible relationship, dropped weight just immediately. Um, I have a friend who just got divorced. She just lost 50 pounds. All she did was cut her carbs and she got divorced and she was, she never even works out. Doesn't even work out (laughs) like 50 pounds. And it's true. We are carrying emotional baggage. Um, One of the things that I've, I've been doing for years with my girlfriend, Christine, Mm -hmm. who's been on the podcast, she does muscle testing, which is a way to Ooh. find, mm-hmm, it's amazing. For those of you who don't know what it is, um, you're literally putting pressure on, someone is putting pressure on your hands um, to see what your body is trying to tell it because we are naturally weaker when the answer is no. And when the answer is yes, we are naturally stronger. So like if someone was like, this is somebody else putting pressure, mm-hmm. if it's yes, it's really strong. But if it's no, it's like my hand just goes right down. Um, so we had done so much of that and my body was so afraid to let go of this extra weight from this relationship because it was protecting me and I didn't feel safe yet. Even though he was gone, I still didn't feel safe for a good year. And then finally it was like, okay, we can go now. 
But yeah, I mean, it's very real. Like your attitude always affects your outcome physically, mentally, um, environmentally, you know, mm-hmm. like, you know, and of course, like both you and I are very much into manifestation and law of attraction. And so if you are into that, you know, it's really just like what you put out, you get back. You want to just call that the golden rule too. Like there's that, like it comes back to mm-hmm. you. So just, re- just trying to, I think, especially, you know, for people who are struggling right now, like I mentioned earlier, like if they're having you know, attitude problems. They're just like, I'm overwhelmed. My life sucks. Yeah. I'm just upset at everything and nothing's going right. Like it's hard to be grateful. Like, yeah. like you were saying too, just find the tiniest things to be grateful about just the littlest things. Like, wow, it's beautiful outside today. Okay. I'm going to take it. I'm going to take it. Yeah. And then like also on days that really do seem to be like going wrong. I don't yeah. know about you, but I start to actually laugh at it. I'm like, what else is going to go wrong? <laughs> like it's a, it's a game. I'm like, okay, cool. Like yeah. what else do you have? Like, this is funny. This is going to become a, a story. <laughs> yeah. A hundred percent. That it, cause humor, right? Like humor just heals everything. And then it yeah. switches you back to the other and it makes yeah. the journey more interesting. It does. Um, I, I wanted, I, I do have a trick you mentioned like for people that are really like, I just can't do like a gratitude list or I just can't. Yeah. I have a trick that I do for that. I shouldn't call it a trick. Um, but, but basically I have a, for myself, a way I deal with that because I think that those really dark, heavy feelings do deserve audience with yes. yourself Yes. because otherwise that'll become subconscious. Like if you're doing the toxic positivity thing, like you're right, just mm-hmm. like always sweeping it down, it's going to boom. Mm-hmm. So what I like to do with that, and because it's so scary for me when it happens, because it's usually stuff that I didn't realize I was pushing down, mm-hmm. but, um, I put my hand on my heart. And just like really feel it Um, because they say, and I don't know, I don't, I can't remember where I picked this up, so I can't tell you who they is, but they said that Mm -hmm. if you feel an emotion for 90 seconds, that really powerful part of it discharges, Mm -hmm. like it'll still be there, but that really powerful, like heavy part that you're avoiding discharges. So Mm -hmm. I'll feel into it for 90 seconds. And then another thing I do is I'll record myself on my phone. Just like as if I was talking to a therapist or like God or myself or just someone who cares. Mm -hmm. And I'll say everything that's bothering me, exactly how I feel. I'll cry. I'll do whatever. And and then I listen back to it and then I delete it. Oh, I love that. And then I'll do (laughs) the other. Yeah. I love that. It reminds me of when I journal. If you Uh ever journal, I've been journaling forever and ever. And this is not something that I would ever want anyone to read, but like when you sometimes read back what you've written, you always sound like a 12 year old girl. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Really emo. Really emo. Just really dramatic. Um, Terrible grammar. (laughs) And you kind of get a nice sort of perspective. I think you and I have talked about this before. I think I brought this up once. yeah. Yeah. Like you just get a perspective of like, okay, shoot. Like I do feel really like dramatic right now, but now I'm listening back to it and like, maybe it's not that bad. And even if it is that bad, it's like this too shall pass. And I'm giving, like you said, I'm honoring that feeling. I'm not pushing it away. And that's very important. I always think it's really important to sit with your feelings and have the cry, you know, just have the feelings like do not keep distracting yourself. I mean, eh, I will say this, like, if you're, let's give it a breakup. You're trying to get over someone, feel your feelings, but do stay busy. It, it, it is right. helpful. Yeah. You can't just sit in your bed crying, eating ice cream all day. <laughs> like you have to kind of like get out and do things. But yeah. yeah, I mean, that's, that's such a great technique. I love that. Just the 90 seconds, hand on the heart and then record yourself or write or whatever feels yeah. right to you. Yeah. Sometimes I make a video. So sometimes that's actually really like looking into my own eyes. Like I have yeah. it like, like a, like a video of myself. Yeah. I do that sometimes too. Oh, I love and that. And sometimes I do it in my car and other people see me doing this and think I'm crazy, but that's okay. <laughs> no, they just think you're on FaceTime. <laughs> it's okay. Right. With, with <laughs> someone, my twin. Well, actually, so my girlfriends and I do Marco Polo. And when you do a video, you do see yourself. So yeah, I I know how you feel. I definitely (laughs) know how you feel. (laughs) 
Um, well, are there any more wonderful stories or tidbits, um, piece of the pieces of advice you'd like to share about this topic? Um, let's see. Okay. Yes. I have one more. Uh, one thing that I think is also really helpful is, um, coming into things with the attitude of experimenting because it kind of takes the stakes down, lowers the stakes. So, um, just, you know, kind of what would it be like if today I act like, okay, I've got this one client and she also wants to feel comfortable in her skin. And I told her, um, as her homework, the next time she goes in public, every time just act like she does, she doesn't have to do it perfectly. It can be super uncomfortable, you know, whatever, but just try. And so I think having like an attitude of experimentation, lowering the stakes and just kind of playing with your attitude, not putting so much pressure on yourself that like, I need to portray this positive attitude, right. but just to kind of like, what would it be like if I, you know, acted like I felt yeah. comfortable. And and then the more you do it, it's kind of like that thing, you know, how if you smile, it sends yeah. the the signals that, oh, I'm happy. It really, yeah. it really is amazing how sometimes just acting as if will create the the thing that you're after. So That's yeah, simple. experimentation is my last yeah. I love that. Uh, thank you so much for coming on. You'll I'll so be you. back. We're already planning Yay. episodes right now. So um, you can find Mara in the show notes, but tell people how they can find you as well. Yeah, um, I'm on Instagram. I am Mara Mitchell. Um, if you want to shoot me an email, it's Mara underscore Mitchell at yahoo.com. <laughs> Yay. Oh my gosh. Well, this was lovely and so much good advice and I can't wait for the next one. Yay. Thank you so much, Jackie. This is great. And thank you for bearing with me. I know I was like weaving around a lot of stuff. No, it's all good. <laughs> we went, we all went on the journey and it was a good one and we learned stuff. I loved it. So thank You're you so awesome. much, Mara. Thank you.